And so let's, I want to talk a little bit about like your organizing background and, and that, and, and, and then, then I want to move forward and talk about whether the, the dynamic of having people, workers who both have more experience at the company and therefore probably a broader set of complaints, um, and, and also better relations with each other in a, a, as a way of organizing. But where, what was your organizing uh, background as you went into this? That's the beauty of this. I didn't have any, uh, you've been covering me since 2020, you know, I, I just got fired in the pandemic. Um, didn't have any intention on unionizing anything. So, um, you know, we, our campaign, the Amazon labor union, uh, you know, we, we just won in April, you know, and uh, we've been campaigning for 11 months. So we started in 2021 and we successfully voted in in 2022. Um, before that, prior to that, nobody on my team had any union organizing experience. Everybody was just an Amazon worker who were t try, uh, tired of being treated, mistreated. Uh, throughout the pandemic and when we saw alabama lose uh you know from visiting the warehouse ourselves we decided to try our efforts and that's exactly what we did so you i'm sorry you no. did you did go visit uh bessemer in in, in the run-up to that election yeah the first campaign yeah we went down there me um along with Derek palmer um and three other amazon workers we went down to the first campaign to see what was going on and we saw that, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities and missed opportunities with the union and with the workers. So, of course, we wasn't going to make that same mistake. So we came back and we said, you know, let's just try to form something that's going to work for us. And and was being an independent uh, union a part of that? Was that something that you had in your mind from the outset? Or was that just something that it kind of you know, it, it worked out that way. No, um, uh, we, we already knew, um, just before, uh, we start decide to go independent that, you know, the established unions, no disrespect to them, but you no, know, Amazon has been around for 28 years. You know, there's been several opportunities to organize Amazon. Um, you haven't heard about them because uh, established unions weren't able to even get those campaigns off the ground. Um, there's actually two efforts prior at GFK that some people know about, some people don't. I can tell you I worked there and I haven't even heard about it until recent, you know, after I was fired. So that just tells you that the established unions were organizing um, just incorrectly um, in traditional style, which wasn't really resonating with the workers so going independent being an actual amazon worker we know ins and out of the company we know the grievances we know the language uh we live them we live these realities every day uh we didn't have to educate ourselves on amazon you know we would have had to do that with an established union we'd have had to tell the teamsters about amazon we'd have to tell uh that RWDSU about Amazon before even talking about a union, you know? So like we skipped that whole process. We're saying we're the, we're the workers. Now we just have to educate ourselves on how to form a union, which is really easy. You know, that's just collective bargaining, right. collective power. So um, we did it reverse style and, and we walked into bubble gum at the same time. How much of, so, um, so you guys were able to be, both uh, more nimble in some ways, but also more specific to your circumstances, both in terms of like what you uh, what 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 you had been dealing with from the company, but also the best time to talk to your fellow workers is at this point in the day because this is when we get fifteen minutes to walk around or whatever it is. How much of that is uh, translatable? How much of that is translatable to other Amazon facilities? And then how much of that is translatable to other non Amazon facilities, right? Like, uh, you know, there's, there's like two sets of like sort of questions there. Yeah. So, um, you know, with our campaign, of course, being, um, a, 
a company like Amazon, we had to do it, uh, you know, just non-traditional and really play chess with them. Um, I spent over 300 days at the bus stop. And I, you know, I can't say how other campaigns are supposed to be designed. Um, but that was a part of our, that was a huge part of our victory. You know, me being at the bus stop while the inside uh, crew, the current workers were able to go inside and communicate with workers throughout the day and on break and uh, before and after shift. Uh, those few minutes every day were were, were vital. Uh, and I think that just goes for any campaign. The only way you defeated uh, the corporation is by having several conversations, not just one. And you have to be available for these workers when they're ready. It's not about when you're ready. It's about when the workers are ready. So we had workers walk past us for two to three months and didn't even say a word to us. But on that third month or fourth month or whenever, uh, we were there. So it was just more of the longevity game. The long, the long, drawn out game, the calm, cool, collective route, showing workers that we care, earning their trust, building relationship up. Meanwhile, Amazon is just drilling, drilling, drilling um, and really forcing workers to really be subjected to over 3,300 captive audiences that they didn't choose to be in. Um, and that also helped facilitate workers towards the union, along with myself being arrested and, and, and the other uh, demonizing tactics they used. Uh, workers saw through all of that. They saw that, you know, how could somebody that's being painted out to be so, you know, uh, ugly by the company be at the bus stop, uh, taking time away from his children, his family, doing this. Uh, he doesn't even work here anymore, along with the other folks that are sacrificing their time away from their family. You know, that that bigger picture started to resonate more. That's interesting. So it's it's really you're almost operating on a, a, a cognitive dissonance that 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 where you sh the, just the presence there and the way that you guys are acting is making the company look suspicious in the way that they're painting you guys. Right. You know, no, we we know we weren't going we wasn't going to be Amazon by money, you know, no amount of money in the world. We, you know. Uh, can stop people when they come together, though, and that's what Amazon don't can't calculate. They can't calculate, and they're still trying to figure out how did we defeat them. You know, they they look at a spreadsheet and they said, okay, we're going to have a hundred captive audiences this week. Uh, we're going to spend X amount of dollars. We're going to bring in this amount of people. You know, we're going to do this amount of uh, propaganda. You know, we look at people by individuals, and what we saw was. You know, one worker uh, not being accommodated for another worker, um, you know, same thing, just not being taken care of, not being heard. And we were there to listen and we were there to support them. And we also helped out in whatever way we could financially, you know, paying medical bills, paying phone bills, cable bills, uh, even the Uber ride to and from hospital or to and from work. It was the little details like that that mattered and that still matters. Amazon will never care about little details like that. They only care about putting profits over people.